What is up YouTube? Welcome back to High Temp Fishing. Super excited for today's video because we're out here fishing. So I haven't had an opportunity to come fishing in a little bit over a week. Last week on my days off, I actually uh, flew out to Atlanta for a conference. So I didn't get a chance to get out and fish, but today it was a little bit rainy. And I said, you know what? I know the rain's gonna pass. And sure enough, it did. So I came out here and uh, I actually caught some mullet. I, I, didn't, I wasn't able to get it on camera because I thought that my the camera was on and then I realized it wasn't, but I caught a couple mullet underneath here. There's two of them. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, they'll jump out of there. So just gotta leave it covered. We're gonna go ahead and uh, try to catch us something nice, you know? The only thing I was gonna hit that mullet really is gonna be either a cuda, a shark, or a tarpon. So we're gonna go after it. Um, but stay, oh, there's a bunch of pilchards right there. See other pilchards? Awesome. So we're gonna get this thing going. I'm gonna rig up my 6,000 and um, I got some wire on it just in case because been I haven't caught a cuda in a long time. So it'd be nice to hit one up as well. So anyways, we're gonna get fishing guys and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. Stay tuned. All right guys, so for this particular setup, um, I've been, I'm gonna run some wire because recently I've just been getting cut off. Um, the last couple times I came out here and I had some big bait, either by a cuda or a big shark. So I ran a two foot wire here, seven knot circle hook. And I'm actually gonna run on a bobber. Now you really don't need to because mullets swim up. They naturally swim on top of the surface anyways. I'm not running it to see if, they, if, if it goes under. I'm running the bobber to actually see it taking off because sometimes I'm actually gonna run a light drag on it and let it go. And then since it's a circle hook, just tighten up the drag and it'll set itself. So I'm gonna run this uh, bobber just for that reason only. I'm gonna leave it you know, not too tight because um, I don't want any accidents. Just something light enough where I'll be able to see this thing going out of the water. Um, and then, when you got mullet, and then for the mullet here, this is probably a 10 inch mullet. It's huge. Um, very, very good looking mullet. I'm actually gonna take this and run it right through the soft spot of the mouth here. Snook love mullet too, but this is a little big. I mean, if a snook were to hit this, that thing would be a monster. And I actually haven't caught a snook out here yet. I've heard some stories of there being snook, but I personally haven't ran one up. And you'll see, just put it right through the, oh, right through the, uh, not through there. And you'll run it right through the soft spot of the mouth here. You'll see inside, and then right through the nose. These are very versatile. They last forever. They're very strong um, fish, very hardy. And uh, he'll be swimming on top for the most part, unless he's trying to get away from sun, then he'll go in any direction he possibly can. And we're just gonna throw it out there right in the middle of that channel. There's a light current. Looks like we're in the middle of a slack tide. So he'll start taking off towards the flats, which is over there. And uh, you wanna give it a lot of line. You see there's a lot of mullet right there as well. And we'll see if we hook up on something good. See how he's running out towards, so this is a, little, this is a channel that runs in here. And then over here is like the flats. On the other side is more of a sandy side behind that mangrove, but it's a long, it's a deep channel that runs out to go out into the, uh, to the Atlantic, out towards the reef. So. We're gonna leave this right here. And uh, again, if something hits it, it's gonna be really big. So you wanna give it enough, you wanna let it run with it. And you know when it's got it, you're gonna hear the reel's gonna be screaming. So while we wait for that rod to take off, I'm just gonna play around with a, uh, I have a two and three quarter inch, um, swim bait with a uh, quarter uh, eighth of an ounce uh, jig head here so we're gonna play around with this see if we can uh, get this thing going get some action going
That mullet is scared, man. He's swimming away. I don't want to get too committed to this rod in my hand now in case I got to put it down and, uh, and grab our actual mission one, or mission rod, like I like to call it. But it's fun to play around with plastics, too. I like using live bait mostly, but I play with plastics as well. And anything that'll, uh, you know, get your, your line in the water, you know? What's better? You know, obviously we, we, there's a lot of speculation. Oh, you want, you know, plastics are great, you know, but I, I'll tell you what, these fish are used to, you know, going after live bait, right? That's what they eat. Unless they have me or anyone else out here throwing plastics all the time. You know, they're, they, they, they're typically 99% of the time going after, 100% of the time going after live bait. So it's always better if you could mimic your area, you know, so even the color of your baits, the style of baits you're using you know it's going to be important it's going to be determined on you know you're the body of water that you're fishing the fish you're targeting right and then the bait that they're typically going after um and you can see a ton of school of pilchards right here um they just kind of hang out here goes a little school of mullet something's running them out of the flats so something should be coming after them um because they typically like to they'll hide in the flats a little bit safer for them but in the ocean nothing is safe except maybe a little tiny reef fish that just have a home under a rock you know that's uh they're pretty much safe but we'll see i might throw that take that mullet out and throw it back into the center there, a little further out towards that line that mangrove line This would be perfect if we, had, we were in a little uh, canoe or a small vessel of some sort so we could anchor up on the corner over there and then just let it sit right in the middle, right? But we got to do what we got. Yeah, it is. You see it out there? All right. I don't want to lose it. That thing is screaming. I don't know. I can't. Shark. We'll, we'll find out now. Yeah, absolutely. You brought me luck today, my friend. Let's see if we can bring him in. I mean, I got, I got some wire on it, so if it's a shark, he's pretty hooked. You know. But if it's a tarp, and I don't know how well that's gonna hold up. Let's we'll see if we bring him in. Let's get a little closer over here. Huh? Yeah, I live in Key West. Yeah, I just fish out here in Key West. There's too many people, you know? And this is my favorite, my, so far, my favorite spot to fish at. It is. It is, man. On occasion, you get some of the people come, but you get to know them after a while. And whatever that is, it's running that way. But I'm actually gonna take him towards the boat ramp. Yeah. I don't really wanna get it out of the water, it's too big. I can't, I want, are you, at this point I wanna see it, you know? That is it. It is, it's big, whatever it is, it's pretty big. A bunch of mullet out there too. Yeah. All right, buddy, we're going this way. Oh, that looks like a big old shark. All right. I 
I'm more tired than he is. <laughs> that was a lot of structure there. I don't really. I got, uh, I'm actually running 80 pound, 70 pound test and then uh, 80 pound floral. Or no, actually I got a wire on this one. So I mean, it's pretty good, whatever. It's gonna hold. This is only getting around a rock or a structure. But we pretty much got them in. We just gotta get them over to the... Uh... All right, buddy, he's gonna go again. He's got a second wind now, probably. Run this way. Run this way. I know. But I, anything bigger than 44, I just try to get him out towards the boat ramp. Try to hook him in the water. Unless it's a shark, then I got to get him out and oh, on the turn on me. But we pretty much got him. Yeah, he's tired. Watch that rock. There goes the bobber. Oh, big old shark. He's huge. All right, pal. We're gonna get you undone. Yeah, black tip. Yeah, a size black tip shark. All right, buddy, we're gonna get you out. So, I ain't gonna have you out more than 30 seconds if you cooperate, buddy. Then we'll get you back in. All right, actually, I want my hook. Can I have my hook back? Could I? And now you can have it. All right, there we go, ladies and gents. So you guys, you want to be careful with them because they could actually uh, turn around and grab and bite their tail. All right, you made it on your own, buddy. You got it? All right. Catch you next time. <laughs> Not too bad. There he goes. Awesome. Heck yeah, man. That's fun, man. Yeah. All right, guys, that was a fun little catch, man. Big old shark. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to throw that last mullet in. You know, now that we can cross the shark off the list, see if maybe we catch a cuda. You know, it'll be awesome. So I'm going to rig up that mullet, and we're going to throw him right back in the water, and I'll catch you guys in a little bit.
All right, something's on it. There we go, let's go. He knows he's hooked now. Oh my God, look at my spool. All right, buddy. Slow your roll, you're bigger than the last one. Oh my gosh. I got a lot of line, but I ain't got that much. All right. You setting your ways already? All right, let's go, you're hooked, buddy. You're not coming off unless you go around a structure. He's huge. He's bigger than the last one, guys. Much bigger. Yeah, that's a big old shark. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he, a lot bigger than the last one. This is the one I did hook the other day. He was huge. We just gotta, gotta bring some line back in. Retrieve what goes. It's always awesome when you fight some big fish, you know, it just really, it's patience, you know? Not brute force. A lot of time people want to set that drag real tight. Guess what? Pop. You know? And that's not what you want. Let them run with it. You know? Let them run with it. You want tight lines all the time. You know? So, if that means loosening up the drag and letting him go another 100 yards if he has to, whatever. You know, patience is a virtue when it comes to fishing and you'll be able to reel in your prize. You know, just enough drag that if he gets a wind, he's not he's not breaking that line. It's not too much, you know? And the solution isn't going higher braid or higher line. It's really just patience. Patience, because you could pull out big fish with 20 pound mono, you know? It's just really how you fish it. That's what it boils down to, so. But they're, it's always fun catching bigger fish, whether it's shark or big tarpon or amberjack, you know, that are just amazing fights when you're wreck fishing, you know? Oh. And, uh, he's holding tight wherever he's at there. Let him sit still. Same thing, want to bring it towards the boat ramp. Then want to drag big old fish over rocks or nothing. It's just not what you want. You want to get these fish back in the water safely. You know, unless you're going to eat a fish and you want them to survive. All right, we got to start making our way towards that boat ramp. Yeah, he's tired already. And quite frankly, so am I. <laughs> Let's get him up and back out. I want to get my hook back if I could. Because that's my last wire. I mean, I can make some more. just don't like going through hooks like that. Those hooks are expensive. All right, buddy, last of the Mohicans. Where's that bobber at? There it is. You guys can see him? All right, buddy, I get it. You tired, I'm gonna try to get you out. Quickly.
Can I get my hook back? Do you mind? No, you swallowed it, didn't you? Yeah, you did. I'm not getting that back, am I? Well, buddy, I'll let you out over here then. Would have been nice. I could have had it back. That's definitely a no-go. Okay, let's get you back in the water. Safe and sound, back to 1985. There you go. All right, pal. Thanks for the fight, buddy. All right, guys. All right, everybody, so that, uh, that about concludes the morning fish. We're gonna do a night fishing as well when Andre and the boys get out of school. But it was fun, we caught two black tip sharks, both of good size, good fights, safely back in the water, released them. So I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna go to West Marine to go get some more seven knot hooks I don't have anymore. So guys, it's been a pleasure. It's always fun when you're fishing in the Keys. And more importantly, stay tuned. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.